Hello! So today I'm going to talk about Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell by Susanna Clarke. Last year I read Piranesi. Now a lot of people absolutely adore this book. However, in my review I said that I thought it was good, not good. Great. The main reason I didn't fall in love with this book is because I felt like the reveal, the twist, was very obvious, very bland, and very, very boring, especially in comparison to how wonderful the mystery was that led us to the reveal. I was just so in. Susanna Clarke's writing is just incredible, and that is what made this book worth reading, but yeah, I was really down on it because I hated that kind of reveal. But as I mentioned in that review, I did fall in love with Susanna Clarke's writing. I thought it was utterly fantastic. So I was up for reading some more of her work. The only reason it's taken me so long is because obviously Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell is an absolute beast of a book. It comes in at just over 1,000 pages. The themes in this book are magic and power, ambition and hubris, loneliness and isolation, tradition versus innovation, morality versus immorality, friendship and rivalry, and finally loss and sacrifice. So what's this book about? The year is 1806 and England is in the middle of a war with Napoleon. Centuries have passed since practical magicians have faded into the nation's past. But scholars of this magical history have discovered that one magician remains. The reclusive Mr. Norrell, whose displays of magic sends a thrill through the country. In order to keep magic alive, Mr. Norrell must travel to London. And there he raises a woman from the dead and he summons an army of ghostly ships in order to terrify the French. Mr. Norrell's reputation soon skyrockets as he becomes one of the most sought after men in England. Yet the cautious and fussy Mr. Norrell is challenged by the emergence of another magician. The brilliant novice, Jonathan Strange. Young, handsome and daring, Strange is the very antithesis of Mr. Norrell. And so begins a dangerous battle between the two men. And their own obsessions and secret dabblings in the dark arts is going to cause more trouble than they could possibly imagine. So there you go, that's the blurb, that's kind of what this book is about. So in essence, this book is combining fantasy, historical fiction and a kind of social commentary. As already mentioned, this is an absolute beast of a book and it is filled with footnotes. Some of those footnotes are on the history of magic and where it came from and some of those are actual historical facts littered in there. I think it's good for you to know from the off that this book meanders a lot. It goes off on massive tangents and it is just filled to the gills with truckloads of side characters. I think your enjoyment of this book will come down to how much you are willing to just allow yourself to get lost in it and not worry about the plot and not worry about the narrative, but just allow yourself to kind of go on this journey. We do not have a tight plot at play and for readers who really require that, this is not the book for you. So what did I like and what didn't I like? What I liked, I thought the world building was fantastic. I mean, Clark does have a thousand pages to play with, but I really felt like the footnotes and the way everything was built and the time it took to allow us to understand the history of magic, magicians, and how it had sort of weaved itself into English history was done expertly. I thought it was really, really good. I thought the characterization was also fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell are both utterly captivating and the differences between them and the way they bounce off of each other was just really dynamic. I really love the historical accuracy of this novel. The fact that it is blending real historical facts with this kind of magical fiction. It just made everything feel that little bit more real and it really balanced well with the writing style. So yeah, another massive tick. I really like the magic system. I really like the idea that it is academic and theoretically based and that most of the magic that happens in this book is coming from books and coming from readings that happened long before. I also really like the humour in this book. It doesn't take itself too seriously all the way through. I thought it was really, really funny. Uh, Mr. Norrell, if you don't read Mr. Norrell as a kind of funny, silly character, you're really going to hate him because he is just so pompous and so arrogant and so annoying that if you don't allow the humour of his character to come across, then yeah, I think you're just going to end up hating reading him all the way through. So yeah, I think you do need to allow yourself to let the humour really kind of like, yeah, come off of the page. And jumping off of the back of that, I just liked how well balanced this novel was tonally. I thought it was funny in moments. It was also scary in moments. It was also thrilling in moments. And it was also very, very dramatic at times. It has a beautiful blend taking place all the way through. And finally, the writing is utterly delicious. Uh, wonderful dialogue and prose all the way through. What didn't I like? 
Only one thing, the pacing and the plot for me weren't tight enough. Now I know this is a 1000 page book and 1000 page books often tend to go off in various different directions. They digress, they take their time. Although I have read a lot of 1000 page books in which I have been riveted all the way through. I've absolutely loved every single second. But with this book, I really love the start, absolutely adored the start and absolutely adored the ending. But the middle was well baggy. Multiple times throughout the middle section, I went to myself, oh no, I think I'm a little bit bored. Or I went to myself, hmm, I would just love it if we could crack on with the main narrative now. So yeah, I did have some issues with this book and I really love long books and I did really, really enjoy this book, but I cannot deny that those thoughts were going through my head constantly throughout the middle section. There are there are parts of the middle section of this book that were really, really interesting. Um, and I think with a 1000 page book, there's always going to be stuff in it that you cling on to more than other bits. Uh, but I don't know. Yeah, I was just any time I'm reading a book and even for a second I go, hmm, I'm a little bit bored, then automatically it's not a five star book. So I think I am landing on this book being around a, a 3.5 to four stars out of five. I thought it was very good and in some moments absolutely excellent. If you are looking for something big, something to get lost in, something epic that also has loads of heart, loads of humour, a really interesting magic system, an absolutely delicious writing style, then this is 100% a book for you. However, for readers who need their plot to be succinct and tight and direct, this is definitely not the book for you. And for the final time, because Susanna Clarke has only written two books, her writing is just so my cup of tea. And I think I am going to read any book she puts out, even though I thought Piranesi was like three stars good. And this is kind of 3.5 stars. Very good. I just love her writing so much. I'm willing to just even if the plot doesn't particularly captivate me, even if the story is a little bit weak, I just love getting lost in her writing. So, yeah, anything she writes next, I'm going to read. So have you read Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell? And if so, what did you think about it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Please let me know in the comments below. I want to thank you very much for watching. And as always, I hope you're well and I'll see you on the next one.